The 1977 American Motors Jeep CJ Dukes of Hazard Edition, coming up next. Hello once again, model car builders. Once again, my name is Trevor Selescu, owner of Monster Hobbies, and here I stand in front of the American flag, so you know what that means. Yes, that's right, it's American Motors time once again, and today we are looking at the MPC 1977 Jeep CJ the Dukes of Hazard edition. And this one is very special to me because if you look at the box, you see all this kind of stuff on there. This was signed by Ben Jones, who is Cooter from the Dukes of Hazard. We saw him at a World of Wheels show a very long time ago and he signed all my Dukes of Hazard box tops, which was really cool of the guy. And I appreciate it very much. So anyway, without further ado, this kit actually came out in 1980, but the Jeep is a 77. I looked it up, so. <laughs> For all you uh, Dukes of Hazard fans out there, yes, this one came out in 1980, but it's a 77. So anyway, we're going to take a look at um, this kit in just a minute. But first, I want to show some of the other box art lids for this because it came out quite a bit. In fact, the Dukes of Hazard, the kit came out in 77, but it wasn't a Dukes of Hazard Jeep until 1980. So we'll look at the boxes from 77 up until the modern day. So let's go check that out and then I will begin our review. Now tonight's Dukes of Hazard model kit review is really going to have you all confused and I'm here to tell you why. Now as we saw from the box arts from before, this Jeep originally came out in 1977. The Dukes of Hazard aired in January of 1979 and for the first few episodes Daisy drove a Plymouth Roadrunner 1974. Later in the show they stopped using that and switched to this Jeep which was actually a first season 1980 Jeep CJ. So as you can see, this is really confusing because the MPC kit is a 77 Jeep and this is a 1980 and the copyright on the box is 1980. And yeah, so pretty confusing. And here we have a lovely picture of Catherine Back, who of course played Daisy Duke on the show. Now for a little more confusion on the side of the box, we have this Daisy decal on the hood, but this only existed as an MPC thing, because as we can see the original Jeep coming up here, you can see that the Jeep originally had Golden Eagle on the hood sides, and there were doors on the Jeep with Dixie on it. Later in the show, the Jeep lost its doors and Dixie ended up being on the hood right where Daisy is. And there is quite a bit of a paint error on here, as this is a black top on this Jeep, and the Jeep also has chrome wheels, when we can see in the show that the Jeep actually has a tan roof and tan interior, and the wheels are sort of a copper gold to match the eagle on the hood. Here we have the side of the box stating that this is Daisy's Jeep CJ, and it gives you all the information you need to know about this kit. Another thing to note is this is when Fun Dimensions actually owned MPC. And now to make everything even more confusing, <laughs> as we open up the lid on this box from 1980, we discover that the instructions are actually from 1996. So I don't know what happened to the original lid for this, but um, <laughs> all of a sudden we've got a modern AMT Ertl kit sitting in here. So <laughs> I'm confused as to what happened there because I forget too. But here we've got this nice clear top. So you would have to mask out the windows and then paint it all tan. And I've got everything here in a bag, which we'll take a look at in a moment. And then more glass and our chrome. And then we've got these really nice tires hiding in the corner down here. So here we have our instruction sheet. And again, we start off with this nice photograph of the Daisy Jeep. And our next panel is, of course, the important things, the before you begin and the tools you will need to build the model. Followed by the building tips for the advanced modeler, which of course includes all things like using sandpaper and everything. 
And finally, we have the index of symbols that you're going to see inside your instructions, followed by the check out our website at www.erdeltoys.com with this very 1999 looking computer. So the first box panel here we actually have includes four separate illustrations. This is our engine assembly, and here we have the transfer case going together, the fan and pulley and generator. This does look to be a four-cylinder in this thing. So there's our valve cover cylinder head, the two engine block halves, little fuel pump, oil pan, and exhaust manifold. And then in panel four, we finish off with the oil filter, the uh, coil, carburetors, and all the other components to build this engine. Now in the wheel assembly of our model, we actually have sort of two choices here. We have the Daisy Custom Wheels, which of course were on the Dukes Hazard Show. And then here we have the actual stock front and rear wheels, which are more like a steel stamping. And then they all go into these cool looking Desert Dog PVC Formula tires. And then you've got backing plates with these axle pins that will glue onto your axle. So be careful not to get glue in there, otherwise your wheels won't rotate. Our next series of panels will focus on the chassis assembly. So here we have the front and rear differentials and leaf springs all going up together. Followed by panel 11 showing all the different components being glued onto the frame. And as you can see there are a lot of separate parts on here, which is very different from the monogram Jeep that we showed the last time around. Panel 12 shows the conclusion of our chassis assembly with the addition of the wheels the drive shafts and the engine block itself, as well as this nice skid plate to keep the engine protected from rocks and debris. Our next group of panels shows the interior body assembly going together with these wonderful three-piece front seats, as well as a two-piece rear bench seat. Panel 16 and 17 show our firewall with our four-wheel drive shifter going in place, as well as our clutch and brake pedals. And then down below we have the instrument panel, the cowl, CB radio and the grab bar. Panel 18 is a culmination of all the interior parts going into our body shell, including our seats, our bigger shifter here, the uh, instrument cluster and cowl, as well as our firewall assembly, and then emergency brakes, taillight bezels, tailgate, and the rear seat. Very impressive. What is really nice about this MPC kit in comparison to the monogram kit is that all these components are molded separately, so there's less chance of sink marks and whatnot going on, we hope. Anyway, here is the grill with the turn signal lenses going in, the front portion of our radiator followed by the rear portion of the radiator. Panels 20 and 21 show our headlights going together and the running lights or fog lights. Panel 22 shows us a three-piece air filter and air cleaner assembly, followed by panel 23 showing the tow ring going together. And to wrap it up, we have a two-piece gas can. Here we have panel 25 with a continuation of our exterior body going together. And what I'm noticing here is that if you want a really simple Jeep kit to put together, if you're new to building Jeeps, get the monogram one that I showed last week. If you've gone beyond that stage and you want advanced building, get this kit. Because here we can see that we've got a two-piece windshield going together with windshield hinges, which I do believe are operational. If you've built this kit before, let us know in the comments down below. You get a steering post and a steering wheel, and all of this is going down onto the body. And here's our front end going into place with the headlights being glued into the grille and then all these cross members in our radiator hose all being dropped onto the body down here. Panel 27 continues on with our hood going onto our body, the air cleaner being dropped into place, the front license plate bracket being glued on, and all the bumpers and lights, as well as the step plates, side mirrors, and your gas cap. Next up we roll into all the latch handles that go on the hood, the CB antenna, the roll cage, which is three pieces with these off-road lights being glued on the top. Then we have our spare tire going into place, rear license plate bracket, rear bumper, rear bumper brackets, and that fuel tank. And then in our final assembly, we drop on the Eagle decal. You can put Daisy or Dixie or whatever you want on the side. And then we've got that nice top going into a place and our flag here, which of course location is optional. 
And that is how you assemble a very complex and very challenging Daisy's Jeep CJ. Here we have the body of our Jeep. And as you can see, this might be one of the only kits I've reviewed on this program where there are no mold marks in the floor panels. In fact, they're all nicely put underneath on the bottom here, and they're very easy to actually remove with that number 16 hobby blade. There are some in the wheel arches, of course, but those would be hidden by the tires. Always nice to scrape them out, though, even though you're the only one that can see it. Again, look at how nice that body is. The detail on here is really crisp. This is more of a World War II type of Jeep. Well, maybe not, you know, late 70s, but still very small before they got really big how they are now. Now, I do notice that there is a sink mark in here. I'm not sure if that's intentional. Nope, guess not, because there's not one on this side. However, I mean, these can easily be filled probably a little bit better than the monogram Jeep. But still, overall, very nice and pretty tiny. I think this might be around the same size as an AMC Gremlin. And next up we have the frame of our Jeep, and again very nicely done. Not too much in the way of sink marks in here. All the mold marks are up on the top, so that's easy to access and sand down, and you won't see them from up and underneath. So I think this might be one of the better MPC kits out on the market. These are the six white parts sprues that you actually get inside this kit. So as you can see in our first parts tree we do get four stock wheels. Five, in fact, one for the spare tire on here. So you could actually build this as a earlier stock Jeep right from the factory. And then again, you can see we've got a transparency under the grill, much like the monogram kit. This is really good. All the mold marks are all nice hidden underneath. And uh, again, very easy to clean up, very accessible. That really looks like a World War II style Jeep steering wheel, doesn't it? So I do believe you could actually make this more of a 50s world uh, era Korean War style Jeep or even World War II, although I think the World War II one is quite smaller. One other thing to note here is that these are actually hook hinges that go into the holes in the hood. So you do have a fully hinged operational hood on here. On this parts tree we have a mixture of components for the engine, the interior and the exterior. These are the bottoms of our seat runners, the three-piece bucket seats. Here we have an optional spare tire cover. And then, I believe, oh, the back of this seat. <laughs> Steering column and a bunch of other bits and pieces. And there's that nice two-piece radiator. Even though these parts are rather small, you can see nice detail on that radiator, like the actual radiator mesh. Some mold marks, unfortunately, in here, but I do believe they're covered by that shroud. Mold marks inside the seats where they will be nicely hidden, so you don't really need to worry about scraping them out. And then, of course, nice detail on that rear bench. Carrying on with interior exterior components, we have that fuel tank there, as well as our bucket seats, front and back, the CB radio, and even the lights have CB on there, so that's nice and molded in. And then there's those towing hooks. Here we have our instrument panel and the firewall and the windshield, as well as our roll bars, tailgate, the step plates, which are upside down, and some more nice details in here. And again, very well done. This is a very good MPC kit, as you can see. Might be a little bit uh, iffy on these pins here for that rear tailgate, so when you put it together, go easy on them, because if they crack off, well, you're going to have to figure a way to uh, put in a little metal rod in there. But there's your step plates. And again, nice work. I mean, I'm really impressed with this one. And last but not least is our engine and our differentials and suspension components, which I've left the best for last. And again, you can see the really nice detail of that four-cylinder. Like, this is amazing stuff. And actually, you know, I am really impressed with this kit. This may be the best Dukes of Hazard kit out there, because if you looked at my General Lee review, you could see just how much flash and everything else was in that kit. General Lee is pretty horrible, but Daisy's Jeep is really superior. But then again, on the show, wasn't Daisy always the better one? Next up, we have the nice chrome here, and this is really a good chrome job. Of course, you can see that there's no wrinkles or anything in it. It's not thick in spots. It's actually really nice. 
There, of course, are the five wheels on there, which are the special daisy wheels for this Jeep, the custom one. And again, it's all optional. You can always use this uh, on something else and build this as a stock Jeep. There's the Jeep on the license plates. We've got our little bumpers here and the headlight bezels and all the other shift levers and everything. So again, really nicely done by MPC. Next up, we have our clear plastic components. There is a windshield in here, and I'm not sure if this is a windshield as well. It doesn't really show in the instruction sheet. However, there's our headlights and our turn signal lenses. And then we have this big canopy roof here. Now, this is not a bad molding, of course. The only thing that might be tricky is to mask these windows on the back here and uh, paint this whole thing. As you can see, this is probably the worst part of the kit. There is a lot of flash on here and mold marks underneath. But if you paint the roof with the tan color, all this will not be visible from the top like it is now. It'll be uh, only visible through the bottom. Would be nice to see how this fit on the Jeep body. But again, there's quite a bit of flash on there and everything else, which I'll have to clean up in the future. And here we have five of the best. These are actually really neat Desert Dog tires. And as you can see, they are big, and look at that nice tread on there. The only downside is they have that web, so you got to be careful when you cut in around here just to get it accurate. Here we have our decal sheet for this kit, and there's that nice gold eagle for the hood. But unfortunately, it doesn't say golden eagle on the sides here as an option to go with the Dixie and Daisy decals. Again, we have our flag, and interestingly enough, there is no AMC Jeep logo molded onto the actual Jeep in this kit. So here we have the little decals which we can put on the sides. Well, I hope you enjoyed this great review of the 1977 American Motors Jeep CJ7, the Dukes of Hazzard edition. And I hope you can find this out there. And maybe when round two brings it out once more, I'll try to get some in stock. And when I do that, don't forget to check out www.monster-hobbies.ca for all our current model car kits. That'll be amazing. So anyway, next week we'll be continuing in our unboxings of all our model cars. So you don't want to miss that. And the only way not to miss that is to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound the notification bell so that every time I unbox another model car kit, you are the first one to know about it. And until next time, everybody, yee-haw!